When I was thinking about what it was that I wanted to create for this presentation, I thought it had to be something bold, something that no one has ever seen before in their textbooks. And I thought to myself, well, how am I going to do that? I'm no creator. I then realized that I've been the bold innovator of something new and everything every day of my life. And that is me and who it is that I want to be and what it is that I want to become. And it's led me to believe that each and every one of us is this new bold innovator of our personalities every day, of who it is that we want to be and what it is that we want to do in this world. Our personality is something that is wildly exciting and explorative, but something that is stunting that exploration today is lack of motivation and not knowing where it comes from. All of us in college are so focused in the world and what's going on around us because we make up that generation of millennials. And we as millennials have this weight of the world on our shoulder to find out how it is that we become successful. But some of us have no idea how it is we exactly want to do that. I want to share with you today my story and how it's led me to believe that success isn't found in your textbooks, it's found in you. And that there is a way that we as millennials can start to become the generation that is motivated to achieve great success. My story begins when I was five years old. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but I developed a love for trains at a young age. Back then, my Thomas the Tank Engine collection was small, but as the years grew, so did my admiration for trains. I went from collecting Thomas the Tank Engine VHSs and wooden track accessories to building model train sets in my parents' living room. I loved seeing how many different layouts I could make from the finite amount of track and cars that I had. And that love of trains even stuck with me when I went to high school. In high school, I was a part of the speech and debate team, and in my senior year, a lot of my speeches were centered around United States infrastructure. I was able to research things like crude oil derailments in the back and oil fields of North Dakota, to logistical bottlenecks like the ones that exist in Chicago today, to the overall efficiency of the railroad in comparison to other forms of transportation like waterways, pipelines, airways, and trucking. I remember thinking to myself, how does nobody else think this is the coolest thing in the world? Is it just me? Am I nerdy? Perhaps. But I began to think that this childhood hobby of mine is starting to develop in this realistic passion that has potential for a career path for me. And that's when I knew that I wanted to do something with logistics for my career, and thus how Iowa State fits into my life. Upon getting accepted to Iowa State University, I found out that the College of Business has a major that directly aligns to logistics, and it's called supply chain management. After learning this, I decided I wanted to get involved right away. I joined the Supply Chain Club in a professional organization called the Institution of Supply Chain Management. I did all this because my curiosity for the profession fueled to learn about my foundation for the career right away. I honestly think that I'm over ambitious as a person. That's not the bad part about me. The bad part about me is I'm way too analytical on expecting better results on anything that I do. Seeing how I wanted to be a supply chain major, I went to the career fair right away. I remember presenting a resume in which I thought was a masterpiece. But little did I know, not having certain things on this GPA, like a freshman GPA, is considered unqualified for an internship. So, naturally, every company that I talked to rejected me. It was at that point in the career fair that I began to realize that perhaps I wasn't there to get an internship immediately, like I thought. Maybe I was there to network, to set myself up better for the future. And out of all the companies that I ended up networking with, my favorite was with Union Pacific Railroad. Now, of course, when I went up to them, I had to somewhat mask the fact that I had a love for trains, but I kept it professional. But after that first career fair, I made it a goal of mine to come back the next year to be considered for an interview spot at that company because I thought that would be something extraordinary. Now, upon setting that goal, I then began to think about where I was at that point in time and where I needed to be by the end of the year in order to achieve it. I decided that I needed to get serious and commit myself to what it was that I wanted to do in college. In one weekend in the spring semester of 2015, I decided I wanted to plan out my entire college career on one piece of paper. Once I had a list of my academics laid out, I then made another list of on-campus activities that I wanted to get involved in. I did this because the two things that I learned from that career fair in the fall were that the ways that you can combat lack of experience as an undergraduate student is by getting good grades and by getting on-campus involvement. 
because that provides you with the opportunities and experiences to gain these skills to be prepared for an internship without actually having one yet. Once I had this plan set in place, all I had to do was to continue to take action for myself and wait for results. Over the course of the next year, I did things I never thought I'd be able to do. In the spring semester of 2015, I pulled off a 4.0 for the first time ever in my academic career. I became more of a role model in the Greek community and in my fraternity on campus. I became a freshman orientation leader and the vice president of the supply chain club. More importantly, I believe it was opportunities and experiences like that that allowed me to gain the skills to be prepared and ready to achieve that goal that I had set out in my mind a year before. It was only then, in October of that year, that I found myself sitting in a place I never thought I'd be sitting before. And that was in Omaha, Nebraska, waiting my final rounds of interviewing with Union Pacific at their headquarters. I've never been so anxious or happy and intimidated at one point in my life. I literally didn't have a facial expression for this because this was literally the five-year-old me geeking out at the fact that I might get to play with trains as an adult. And that dream became a reality of mine when I received a phone call over Thanksgiving break saying that I've been extended an offer to come work for them this summer as a marketing and sales intern. That was me realizing that this passion I've had all along can most certainly become a reality for me. Now, upon getting this internship and a lot of other different leadership opportunities, I then began to reflect on where it was I came from and how I got there exactly. It then dawned on me that the way that I followed my passion could be shared and applied with anyone. I realized that the path of success follows a very simple three-step process. Now, this isn't some trademarked product. This is a logical flow of thoughts that I believe can help solve that lack of motivation in millennials today. This process begins with understanding your curiosity for your passion. It then transitions into realizing the commitment that it's going to take to turn this passion you have into your realistic dreams. It then concludes with understanding that you have to have the confidence and self-actualization to achieve that dream that you had set out in your mind. This is how we begin to write that chapter of success. And it begins with understanding your curiosity for your passion. Every dream starts with a thought or an idea. It's posed as a question in our minds as to why does this one thing create meaning in our lives? Curiosity leads us down the path to success because it tells our brains to go after something. Curiosity is almost provocative like that. It's almost bugging you to try and find out why in the world this one thing keeps reoccurring in your life. For me, that was trains. Trains kept showing up in my life whether I was 5, 10, 15, or now 20 years old. And I began to figure out that the way that anyone can hone in their curiosity for their passion is by taking mental inventory of their thoughts. Get a journal or a piece of paper and create a list on anything that you're thinking about on a topic that you like. Then go in on that list and circle out the things that stand out to you the most because that means you found something that's unique to you. That list that you created represents your interests, but those things that you circled out represent what you're passionate about because you were able to prioritize what specific question you wanted to answer in your mind. Once you have what it is you're passionate about, investigate ways to incorporate it into your everyday life. That was through speech and debate with me. I found ways to put trains into my competitions every weekend, and it allowed me to click to say, I really like what it is I'm doing. I like the skills that I'm gaining from it. I like the knowledge that I'm getting from it. I want to continue down that path to see where it leads me. Once we start to understand why it is we're answering that provocative question in our minds, we arrive at the next step in this process. The next step in this process, and by far the most important step, is understanding the commitment that it's going to take to turn this passion you have into your realistic dreams. This is where I believe the problem of our generation exists. We, as millennials, are afraid of commitment. The second we get a whiff of adversity, we back out and get afraid. We fault by taking the easier road because the easier path is paved with security. We don't want to work hard for four years straight only to be thrown out into the real world in hopes that we find a decent paying job. But I say, what if we focus on what we can do right now? 
Commitment starts with knowing that what you are about to do is not going to be easy. That's the one thing that I wish more people knew about me. Lots of people know me factually, but what people don't know is how this path to this internship and other leadership opportunities that I've held have had episodes of adversity. And that goes back to that piece of paper that I wrote down that I said I wanted to commit myself to. We live in a society where we say, it's okay not to know what you want to do in college right away. But I seem to have missed that boat and decided I know exactly what it is I want to do for the next four years of my life. And after doing that, I got comments from peers and other adults saying, how can you be so sure this is what you want to do? Is this just a phase that you're going through? And I took those questions and I went back to that piece of paper and all these thoughts began racing through my mind about, well, look at all these classes I still have yet to take. Look at all the activities that I still want to do. Well, what if I overload myself while trying to do this? What if I fail while trying to achieve that dream that I had set out in my mind? That's the question that makes us fear the idea of commitment because it creates a situation in our minds in which we do not see a positive outcome for ourselves. That question of what if I fail while trying to achieve my dreams has allowed me to demotivate and second guess some of the work that I've done in college at times, simply because it's made me afraid. Commitment is scary. That's the honest truth. We don't want to invest in this idea in which we do not know the outcome because we're all time-sensitive individuals. So how is it that we as millennials are going to face that question of, well, what if I fear the idea of commitment while trying to turn my passion into my realistic dream? You have to know that you need to get outside of your comfort zone to attempt this leap of faith. That's what makes all of us bold innovators, is that each and every one of us has this ability to take this leap of faith to achieve something amazing. But we don't. By taking that leap of faith, you're going to start to realize that you can change that phrase of, well, not what if I fail while trying to commit. You'll start to change it into, what if I learn while trying to commit myself to something? What if I grow through some way to eventually, what if I succeed? while trying to turn my passion into my realistic dreams. Know that commitment is something that has short-term wins and losses for you that reaps long-term rewards in the end. When deciding on whether you want to seriously commit yourself to your passions and dreams, be able to ask yourself these kinds of questions. Are you okay with being exposed to other people's opinions who might not align with yours? Are you okay with the idea of possibly being knocked down while trying to achieve your dreams? Be the kind of person that wants to have regrets because that's proof that you attempted or are trying to get outside of that comfort zone and that you're learning from it. Because by the time we step up on that stage in four short years at graduation, the things that we regret in the short term will be the things that we actually did and the outcomes that came from that. While the things that we regret in the long term over here will be the things that we wish we did but never put in the time to do. So I ask of you, What's the benefit of not seeing how far you can go with something? What's the benefit of not attempting that leap of faith? Prove people wrong by showing you can and will commit yourself to this idea you have because this is a battle in which you can win. And once you start to win, you get to the final stage in this process. The final stage in this process, and what I like to think the most fun part about this process, is understanding that you have to have the confidence and self-actualization to achieve this dream that you've had. This is when all your hard work starts to pay off. That idea that you had in your mind that you thought was impossible before is now becoming your reality. And all you have to do to achieve this step in the process is to continue to take action for yourself. Take action for that list that you were curious about and the things that you found that you were passionate about. Take action for that idea that you wanted to commit yourself to because you are aware of the risks and rewards associated with that. That's that piece of paper that I still planned out my college career for me right now. I'm aware that my course of action could change at any point in time in college, but I'm also aware that being committed to something like that is giving me skills to be applied in all different places of my life, like getting that internship that I wanted. The best part about this stage is that you will realize the things that make you confident are those skills that you gained from stepping outside of your comfort zone in the commitment stage. 
Know that confidence isn't only caring about your own self-centered interest. Being confident means that you're satisfied with what you've produced and that you love what it is that you're doing so much that you want to share it with anyone. Being confident will allow you to take whatever idea you have, no matter how big or how small, and run with it like no other. Don't be an individual who thinks they have a weird passion or dream. Individualism is so underrated in that aspect. I'm telling you that you can find what it is you're curious about and passionate about. You can do the work to commit yourself to the idea of it because you know the risks and rewards that can come from it, and you can gain the skills to be confident enough to love what it is you're doing and share it with those around you. I know this because it's exactly what I'm doing right now. Do you think wanting to work for the railroad since you were five years old is a cool, let alone sexy, career topic for a college kid? No, it's not. But I sure think it's cool, so why not follow it? I had the curiosity to learn about employment at a railroad. I learned about what path suited my interest in college and acted upon it, and it's now giving me the skills to be confident enough to do the best job I can at a place at which I consider to be a dream job of mine. Who knows where this will take me next, but I'm excited to find out. And that is how this process works. Once you think it's over through the confidence stage, curiosity brings you right back to the beginning, leading you back down a new path to success. This is the process that I like to call the three C's of success, and they are the fundamentals that build that chapter that's not found in your textbooks. Thank you.